Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Rise and Grind in the Morning. I'm 72 The Arctic, aka Jason B. And today we're going to talk about rationality. We're going to talk about the week in review. So stay tuned here in just a moment as we get started. Right, everybody welcome to rise and grind so we've been talking about quite a few different things this week we've been talking about our unbiased thoughts about our opinions um how our opinions apply what we see is important to us um we've talked about quite a different thing so if you want to follow along when i do rise and grind in the morning you can purchase you know the daily stoic i'm not paid by ryan holiday i do not gain any money but I do give him his absolute props for writing a wonderful one page a day, uh, mindfulness and thinking. And, you know, his book is titled uh, in, you know, really good. The daily stoic 366 meditations on wisdom, perseverance, and the art of living. So if you're not familiar with stoicism, just real quickly, um, stoicism is really to kind of help you think more mindfully about yourself and not so much about others and how to harness the best out of you. But today's episode really is all about, you know, rationality. You know, I've been really working on my own inner work. So some people might say um, I've been working on my self perceptions, my self evaluations. So uh, rationality through unbiased thoughts, you know, we're going to explore how our opinions and performance in relation to rationality works. You know, uh, the Stoics would say self-assessment or of our actions and patterns and beliefs are critical, but it helps us identify what we overlook too in an opportunities. Um, you know, so that's really what we're here to talk about. So we've had a few questions throughout the week and we've had, I, I definitely have talked about uh, many different things. Like for example, here are the questions of the week. Number one, we started with uh, last Sunday and Monday. You know, what can I pay closer attention to today? And can I stop feeling hurt by every little thing? So those are really poignant questions. But I also went on to, you know, Wednesday. Do I need to have an opinion about things? Or um, are you leaving room for whatever might happen? So <clears throat> being able to self-assess, judge situations as they are has been very important. But when it came to um, the 20th and the 21st, which was yes, uh, Thursday and yesterday, what are the few real goods? That means, you know, your self-control, your justice and your courage, how you really uh, appreciate what is actually good. And then yesterday I didn't come on. I was really busy with work. I had some things to do. But yesterday was how long can I go without letting my attention slide? And today is more about, am I self-aware, self-critical, and self-determining? How do I understand how all those things work? So I did a little background research, and I, and I looked at what was actually really important, and I was evaluating even where my priorities are at. You know, I talked about um, last time on YouTube, I talked about the more importance of our morning routine. Why is that? Because... What you, how you start your day is more than likely how you're going to finish your day, right? And that is thinking about the mindfulness. That is thinking about what truly matters. You know, um, when people complain saying, I don't have enough time for myself, or, I don't have enough energy. And they look at, you know, all the things that make who they are. But it's like, well, how do we sharpen it? And how do we make these practices work for us? How do we really get things going? And that is self-evaluation. And can you be unbiased about your evaluation? That's the hard part. So when we judge ourselves, you know, do we make excuses for our behavior, whether it's good or bad, you know? And I think that's very, very important. But if we do this, what are the things that we're on autopilot for? You know, the things that you make an automatic decision, the things that you just, you that's the way that you were raised, you were trained. So I've got a few things to kind of share with you this morning. You know, how, like, for example, um, 
Ryan uses on page 123 of his Daily Stoic, and he, he points out Epictetus's discourse 4.12. And I wanted to read more what was to why Epictetus said this. So I have Epictetus's discourse, but only gives a select, selective writings of it. But for the sole purpose of this, he's he Ryan quotes, when you let your attention slide for a bit, you don't think you will get a grip, get a bit grip on it whenever you wish. Instead, bear in mind that because today's mistakes or mistake, everything that follows will be necessarily worse. It is impossible to be free from error, not by any means, but it, it is possible to be a person always stretching to avoid error. For we must be content at least to escape a few mistakes by never letting our attention slide, right? So what does that really mean? And I'm glad you would probably ask that question. When we look, look at this, Ryan goes on to say his own thoughts. He says, Winfred Gallagher in her book, or yeah, Winfred, Winifred, excuse me, Gallagher, in her book, Wrapped, quotes David Mayer, a cognitive scientist of the University of Michigan, Einstein didn't invent the theory of relativity. While he was multitasking at, a, at the swiss office it came after when he really had time to focus and study attention matters attention matters and in an era in which our attention is being fought for by every new app website article book tweet post its value has only gone up Part of what Epictetus is saying here is that the attention is a habit and that letting your attention slip, wander, builds bad habits and enables mistakes. You'll never complete all your tasks if you allow yourself to be distracted with every tiny interruption. Your attention is one of your most critical resources don't squander it. So the question of the day is, how can I go without letting my attention slide? And I have talked about this on Rise and Grind, and I think it's very important that we really dive into this. How do we not let our attention uh, slide? And that's by deciding what is really a priority in your day, right? What is a priority when you're a parent and you've got to get your children ready and up and going for school, or you have to get things going for your husband or your wife, you know, are you really attentive to the core essentials of what roles, rules and roles you play within your own home? And for even for single people, that's also something to consider. It's like, what is my priority? I have all these options. I have all these things available to me. What do I pay attention to first? Well, I'll tell you what happens more likely or more or less. Um, and even Ryan's pointed it out in his own um, daily stoic. He says that the, one of the first things that he does not do, he does not attend to his social media. He does not attend to his cell phone. He enjoys the quiet of the morning. So having that self-discipline in the morning is very, very important. Um, understanding where your attention goes and where it flows. Does it really need to be on a screen or an email or an appointment list to begin the stress of the day before it's necessary. I think it's very important that we all get a grip on this because the way that we intend to start the morning is also the way that we intend to do our work or the way we build relationships. Many people fight over how can I get into a relationship or sustain one. And it, what really matters about all of it is how you appropriately attend the things that matter. Now, rationality is not easy. I mean, we deliberate it on all the time. We give our opinions about all things all the time. What is in the priority list? So if you're really to look at life's true priorities, it's your food, it's your shelter and your sustenance, your sleep. And I will add companionship or our interaction with other people. That doesn't mean necessarily a relationship of romance, but relationships are important to the human experience but how do we keep ourselves in check and the stoics had very critical interior 
empires that ruled themselves. That they, they means they used justice. They used courage. Self-awareness was a big thing amongst the Stoics. So being self-aware and self-assessing was not so much where you just judge yourself, but you understand the patterns in which you do things, um, the way that you portray yourself in many different areas. So when you understand, you know, you judge yourself and you say, oh my God, I really didn't mean, it's because this was this, I was tired. Um, matter of fact, I heard a colleague of mine who said they were complaining that, that a man hit on them in, in a butcher shop. And I'm like, well, did he say, you know, any kind of sweet things or did he, you know, tell you, hey baby, what's up that booty? So, you know, whatever, saying that example, or are you just complaining about the opportunity? Are you complaining out of your, your, your voice to have people sympathize. But I read something that really touched home today. And if you have, you can go to and buy this at Barnes and Noble or Amazon. This is Epictetus' Discourse and Selective Writings. Now, Epictetus really pointed out some things that I really think that we need to pay attention. He says um, in book four of his discourses to those we lightly share personal information. This is key. Part of rationality is how we deliberate with other people and identify with other people. He goes, whenever we think that someone has spoken frankly about their personal affairs, somehow or another, or another, or other, we are impelled to share the secrets with them and think it is being honest. But in the first place, because it seems unfair that we should hear news of our neighbor and not share with them some news of our own. And secondly, because we imagine that we won't make a forthright impression if we keep personal affairs confidential. But he goes on to say also, he says, people often say, in fact, I've told you everything about myself. Why won't you share with me anything about your life? But Epictetus cautions he cautions this. He says, additionally, we believe that it is safe to confide in someone who has already entrusted us with private information on the assumption that we would never betray our secrets, least we betray theirs, which is just how incautious people are entrapped by soldiers of capital. So what does that mean? So he's basically saying, well, you know, hey, I was really forthcoming. I explained myself. I gave you all the tools in which things are going to matter, right? And that's important. But what you deliberate and how you share, you know, if you share your weakness, well, for example, I never think that my Asperger's is my weakness. I actually think it's my asset. If you say that you have ADD or ADHD and you tell people, well, I, or I have PTSD, it does not lower somebody's guard to be impressioned like they will go easier on you. You're just relating to them what your weaknesses are and to use against you. Keeping evaluation of your affairs is what truly matters. How you use your pleasantries. I talked about this, you know, in talking to people. What do you need to introduce in the beginnings of all conversations? When someone asks you, how am I doing? That's not saying, that's not giving an invitation, divulge all your problems. But we tend to do this in society often. We get wrapped up a lot. We do. And even I myself have done this. Um, there have been people that I was trying to connect with. There were people that I was trying to um, gain some ground with, get an alliance, see how they can fund me. Even when I'm on social media, that's also an area where I could be truly exposed. But yet we complain when people use the facts that we have provided or affairs that we've provided to them. So what is it, where does this all matter? What truly matters to us all is thinking of what you deliver and what you deliberate. Is it necessary? Is there a point? Is there something that you truly need to get done for the benefit of you and the benefit of me? But see, the persuasion, the acts of persuasion to lower your emotional guard, to be able to connect with me, 
Dale Carnegie wrote in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. He says, meet people where they're at. Understand, let them reveal who they are. Don't overextend yourself. And don't we see this tendency with the rich and the poor? One of the careful things that I see that happens so very often is the rich need to pay more to the poor. Right? Robin Hood and versus the king. You know, I, I think that it's something that we, we really got to take in, in consideration. Why do we? Is there such thing as fairness? But see, this is where rationality comes into play. Rationality says, oh, ho, ho. Let me mind my own affairs in my own channel. Let me manage and self-assess before you do. Before the weights of my words and my thoughts and my beliefs weighed by anyone and scaled by anyone else, I will scale it and I will scale it properly. I will treat you with a level of dignity. I will treat you with a level of compassion and sometimes empathy too at the same time. But then there are times where we need to deliberate and say, this is just the facts. I'm not really here to try your, 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 your mindset. I'm only here. I'm conveying for a reason. Right. So just to take a brief a break on my episode, I do have on another app called Wisdom. I'm on live on Clapper and YouTube. So if you want to subscribe to me on YouTube, I would greatly appreciate it. Just look up 72 The Architect and look up Rise and Grind. You'll be able to also make comments there as well. But I'm going to bring up a colleague of mine, truly Julie, real quick from Wisdom. Good morning, Julie, and welcome also. Thank you, uh, Car. Stop. I can't read your name, but it's real small. But thank you for coming in. All those. Julie, good morning to you. How are you doing? And what would you like to share? Right, because you're the one that gave it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's very important what you just said. I think it's very important what you said, because if we look at what we're trying to communicate to people, right, if we really look at what is truly important, this is one thing that I always use in my head when no matter who I meet, whether it's a friend or relative, even my own kids, what is the point that what I'm saying to them? Why is it so important? Straight. We don't do this. We're, we're, we're really on autopilot. And we think, and I've seen this so often with so many different people, I've seen people go and explain their trials, tribulations, and traumas, which you don't even need to know. You really don't. But if you focused on the pleasantries, the simple things, like I'm, I'm sharing space with you, or I'm communicating with you for a value. If you took time, keyword, if you took time to say, what was the point? Do I need to explain a story? Do I need to give you background? I think many of us get caught up in feeling that if we explain our background, if we give you some morsels of whatever's happened, right? If we give this to you, you will lower your position to be balanced and fair. But that's an illusion. It is an illusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Bingo. And doesn't that drive people mad when they don't get the last say? It's kind of like, you said something so important to me. Wow, all of a sudden, I feel enlightened. But it's like, what did you truly share? What did you share? That, what did you give away to people? And, and the thing is, we don't need to explain to people the unnecessaries. And what are the unnecessaries? I need to, I don't always need to tell you, explain um, what's going on with my kids. I do not need to explain to you what's going on in my personal relationship or my affairs. When I am sharing space with people, I look at the point. When I'm making rise and grind in the morning, I am a thought provoker. I am somebody who will challenge you with questions. I will use readings. I will use intellect. And I will also use emotional intelligence, life experience. Because the only thing that you truly own are your words, your thoughts, and the experiences that you have participated in life. Nobody else. You can't blame anyone for anything. You may be able to blame your parents for how you were programmed. But it's really up to you how you're going to program and take today's steps and tomorrow's steps on yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. You can, you really can. True. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. and won't they tax you on that won't won't people this is a question for anyone to think about and ask and and you can provide your comments in the chat on on either um either on clapper or wisdom or youtube i want you to think about when you communicate, what leverages are you giving away in your conversation? Do you even realize this? Even to your children. Okay, so a lot of us are parents out there, right? And there are things that our kids will weigh and measure even against us. And then we'll refer when we get into an emotional disposition and say, well, do it because I told you so. I know, right? I'm right. You're wrong. I'm smart. You're dumb. You're short. I'm tall. I'm in power. But see, the Stoics really talk about this. They, they talk about your perceptional value versus your observational value. And what's the difference? Your perceptional value is more about what you think things mean. And your observational value is, this is what I understand, but I'm not trying to make it mean anything. Like a tree is a tree. The ocean is the ocean. You know, you don't need to overcomplicate and reinvent the wheel. But when you listen, and this is the one big thing that I, I, I really appreciate about young people and old people. I'm 50 years young. That's right, 50 years young. I can learn from a 20-year-old just the same as I can learn from an 80-year-old. And it really depends on my patience with my conversation. Because when I do this, I am not acting in an authority. Because when I don't have to act like I'm the authority, I control myself. And that is really key. Julie, I'm going to go back to, is there anything that you'd like to, in closing thoughts um, that you'd like to share?
Thank you so much for coming on up. I definitely appreciate you. All right. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. So let's get right back into um, the point of all this. When we are making rational thoughts, when we are actually making a position on rationality, it does not mean that you need to convince everyone just yourself. That doesn't mean you get to lie to yourself. That doesn't mean that you are going to be the fool and your constant folly. It means that you're willing to learn no matter where it comes from. If you can keep emotional control, emotional control right now, emotional equity is the most valuable S asset in the world. Because why? Because it leads to attention. How many of us want to be famous for being podcasters, being on YouTube, um, we want to be thought leaders, respected, all these things. Many of us want this, right? That's why we get on these platforms. We want to connect with so many people. And sometimes we just want to listen and pass the time. But what I will tell you is that's great. But your self-awareness, your self-assessment doesn't mean you're judging yourself, but you're realizing also what you share, what you say no to what you obligate yourself to. You know, many times in our day, we are so over obligated because we say yes or nothing. That's a big opportunity is when we say nothing, when it is appropriately to say something. When you stand up for yourself, the wrongs versus the rights, the rich versus the poor, no one ever told you that you can't achieve greatness that you couldn't defy or tr not trust. There are people who will tell you how, how not to succeed. There are plenty of programs. How many times have you guys seen it out there where someone is saying, I will teach you how to be a millionaire. I will teach you how to be self-confident. I will teach you how to get out of doubt for a low price of $199 or $500. Subscribe to my program. They write these books. Your level of attention your emotional self is the most expensive equity that you have. You capitalize on it every single day. But the minute that you start deliberating and giving it to someone else and put it in somebody else's pathway for them to decide, like, for example, when you go, when you're at your job and you want to raise and your, your company tells you, well, we don't discuss raises during our evaluations, wait a second, my evaluation is that you're looking at the quality of my work, you're looking at the production that I've done over the year, you know, so on and so forth. So what then? When do I discuss it? And then they say, well, you're only going to get three to 4% and that's it. That's all we're willing to deliberate. Thank you very much. How you should respond. And I don't say you should very often. When I think about what you deliberate on and how you deliver, thank you for letting me know what you're willing to pay me guess what? I might be looking for another opportunity. They know that. And it's weird because when we look at, I know I have another guest in the, in the wings waiting on wisdom, but bear with me. I want to finish my thoughts. One thing that I've learned about life in my 50 years of working experience in restaurants, working in legal environments, working in offices, corporate, and even private. One thing that I've really taken away from all this is you are always in a point of negotiation. You are always in power of your negotiation. Because when you go look, say like if I'm, I go work for somebody else doing the same thing and you give, say like you give your boss, hey, look, I'm going to be leaving this position. I'm giving you a fair notice. I could give you two weeks. And then they're, wait, 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 I can't lose you. You're my most valuable employee. And then you respond, you know what? I appreciate being your most valuable employee or, or providing the most valuable experience. When we did an evaluation of pay and increase, guess what? You told me I was only worth three to 4%. In order for me to thrive, not survive, remember this, ladies and gentlemen, in order for me to thrive, I make my equity of my expertise, my work, and what I do with you available in my decision as well as it is in yours. So I'm going to go after this other opportunity. You know, if you have a counter offer, I'll consider and see. And that's where it's kind of like being a smart ass, but, and it can, it also can backfire in your face. 
but and keep that in mind. But when you think about this, when you talk to your employers, when you talk to your bosses, and they they will use emotional ploys or they will discount you, get rid of you quickly, find somebody to replace you because there is no such thing as loyalty in business. There really isn't. There's only slotted there's you're either there for a season or for a reason. And when you're there for a season and they let you go, look at how many layoffs have taken place in Amazon, Facebook, Google, some of the biggest tech companies out or, or social media companies out there and tech, when they laid these people off, did they have too much more than they can afford? Well, they decided, well, wait a second. We have a new way. We have other things that maybe your, your resources are no longer required or needed, but always keep in mind that you are in the negotiating seat and always keep your mind growing, learn new skills. That's rationality. This is where you've got to think like, Hey, I take the time to evaluate my emotional holdings because you could be fired at any time. If you're an at-will employee, and what is that? An at-will employee is a discretion of the employer and you. You really don't owe a two-week notice. That's just a subtlety. It's a polite thing to do. But believe it or not, once you hand in your notice, that's really the day you quit. You do not owe them anything. Most employers cannot report on you, in my opinion. They cannot report to you that you are a bad person just because you didn't give a notice. No, this is a negotiation. This is my exit strategy. So when you're exiting your companies and you're exiting your employment, you do not need to always share everything. If you want to, to entertain a counter um, offer, that's fine. But think about all the things that you were going to complain about and why you were leaving and why the other opportunity might be better. It's your rationality. It's the way you, you choose things in discretion. I've got another uh, caller. I have Zahara um, Samuels. Okay. Let's see what you got to say. Um, brand new speaker. So be mindful, be respectful, and see, keep to the points. Let's see what happens. All right. Um, Zahara, good morning. How are you doing? And what can you share? Mm -hmm. You can just call me 72 or just call me just Jason. I, I, I take no hierarchy, whether I'm a, a wise guy or a dumb guy, just call me Jason. I prefer that or 72 either way. Thank you so much. I do appreciate, you know, if you do have a YouTube or you have a podcast, you can send me messages either on wisdom or on clapper, even on YouTube, send me your links, but, but I'm, here's what I'm going to tell people. Give me a exact episode that you want me to watch. So when you talk, and here's the thing, just a break in my, a little bit of my episode content, I want you to think about why you want to invite people to listen to what? Not just listen to your podcast, but to listen to something, whether you know them or not. Hey, I really enjoyed this piece of material. I would love for you to enjoy this. These are some key points. Give people an invitation, kind of like, kind of like a party. It's like, hey, you know what? I've got a great birthday party. We're going to throw down some tacos. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have some laughs. You interested? There you go. Who don't love food? Something wrong with you. You don't love food, right? You you gonna you, are you gonna come to my cookout? Are you gonna hey you gonna you gonna slang down some food with me and share share a beverage and food and and, and good conversation because I there you there you go. That, that's right. Now you think about if you do this intellectually and you get to rationality, the more rational and calm you are, people want to deal with you. But if you're not, excuse my language, but people don't want to fuck with you. If you are coming off too aggressive or if you were just Mr. All that, that's what I've been told at, in times, but I take no offense. I have earned my, yeah, yeah. I earn my self-respect and I don't, I do not need to qualify in anyone's consciousness but my own first 
that's where I hold my value. But when I, when I greet you at my door, when I invite you into my house, when I invite you to conversation, I'm going to treat you as best as I possibly can. But if you come off twisted and a fool, guess what? A quick in the quick with the boot and quick with the butt. Hey, you're out the door. You're out of my conscious, and I forgot you in two seconds. It's that easy. But people feel that they, when someone tries our patience or our time, that we got to always address them. No, you don't. Even with family, family can be very brutal. You know, they can be a loving, they can be a legion, but it's just like, just like I tell my uncles or I tell my cousins and they get twisted and they want to, oh, because we're family. No, I'm a man. This is my household. You are a guest. I would not like to have to remind you of where the space you're in, but I encourage you to enjoy the space that we're in by these parameters. And by doing that, and then this is what happens is in our casual conversation, relating things that are unnecessary or important because what we relate to doesn't mean it translates. Think about that. Well, thank you, Zahar, for coming up. We'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to do my final notes of today's show. So thank you so much for coming on up. We pre definitely appreciate you. All right. You have a great one. All right. Take care. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what is the thoughts overall? What is the weekly wrap up? What I really want you to think about, what I really want to encourage you, not just to how do your best, not just to pay attention to what you say, but what you understand. And when you do that, you are not leverageable so easily. And that, that applies to love, business, friendship, social status. When you need less, you are in way more control than you possibly might realize. When you actually call the shots, it's like, you know what? Thank you so much for sharing some time. Thank you. I appreciate you. But when you come trifling and twisted, thank you very much. See you later. I'm not going to carry the judgment and you are paying, you are not paying rent space in my mind. Paying rent with somebody else's thoughts costs you too much life Gosh, think about all the things that you could earn in your life, right? I want you to really think about this and how valuable it is. Out of all the stuff that you own, how much continues to provide value in you every single day? Now, take that notion, right? Those things. Now, I want you to think about all the experiences that you have to this day that mean more. Your experiences, your emotional holding, what you do, how you roll with it. You know, like me, I think about my 15-year-old daughter every single day. I've not seen her in a year. Going through these trials and tribulations of, of custody. But I will not let those thoughts tear me down. I think about my 26-year-old and I think about my 5-year-old. When I've taken him to Disneyland, gone on to hike, seen beautiful sights, their smiles, their giggles. And then when I see my partner, my beautiful lady, my woman who has held me to hellfire and brimstone and then, but also loved me passionately. When I think about my parents and I think the opportunities that they have given me, I think about my education of the sleepless nights, hours of study, when I entertain making money and when I tell my family you may choose whatever you like. You are welcome. But see, people, because you provide hospitality, they think the rationality is going to be something more because we're related, because I've known you for so long. Epictetus talked about this. He's, I'll be careful. He did say this. We believe that it is safe to confide in someone that has already entrusted us with private information. But that does not guarantee that they understand what to divulge and what's not to. So, you know, that's really the thought. So what you hold value, keep patience, keep understanding. And if something causes you an emotional reaction right off the bat, I want you to think about this. If you stop and not let the impulse erupt out of you like a volcano, good or bad, Hold yourself, enjoy, smile, be happy with what you got. 
but that doesn't mean to stop trying to achieve or ascend. It just means you're not willing to leverage yourself. And that's something about debt. Here, here's something about business. More people have credit card debt and serious debts based on emotional rationality. They purchase things longer than what it would take them if they were to save. If you were to save in cash, would you make the same decision as opposed to getting credit? Now, if most of us here in America, especially where we really, really do need to value ourselves and what we believe in, if think about this, if you were to stop borrowing today and only spend what you have, what do you lose? Because when you spend money that you cash or what you have in the bank versus when you take credit, see credit always takes interest. There are plenty of people who will preach on, you know, what makes money is debt. Sure it does. But if you were to take a valuation, a bank evaluation on your worth and you're not willing to spend, but you're willing to spend on certain things, guess what? A lot of these corporations that have a grip on us and a grip of our attention ain't going to work so well. They need it. You spend your attention good or bad, whether you like it or not. But that currency, that social currency truly matters. It matters to you, it matters to your loved ones. And see today, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to tell you my joy today. You know, I'm going to watch Tank Davis fight Ryan Garcia on pay-per-view. I'm going to have some great food with my lady and my five-year-old and my lady's son. I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day. And what I'm going to do up until that point, I'm going to cook. I'm going to clean. I'm going to celebrate my day off because I am not at work today. I'm going to celebrate my human experience. That's my emotional fortitude. And when you think about what that means to you, you will not give it away so easily. So as a wrap up and all these questions that I've asked in the Daily Stoic, which you can check me out weekly on Clapper and Wisdom and YouTube. Um, I'm on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and some Saturdays between the hours of 7 and 8 a.m. Yeah, you can find me um, either on here as you see it. And I will try to make more content. I'm also going to be um, collaborating with my co-host, Mr. No Show, and we'll be doing Blink Canvas. We will be talking about conspiracies. We will be talking about things that mm, make you scratch your chin or squint. But I want you to be able to enjoy. I want you to be prosperous. Before you get twisted and mad at somebody, hold back. Let them reveal themselves, even as it frustrates you. Practice this. Hold your breath for two minutes if you can. Let's see if your anger is really worth it. Might stop you from making a mistake. Anyhow, that's all the time that I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed today. If you want to give me support, check, like I said, check me out on YouTube. Leave a comment. If you want to send me a message, whether on Clapper or Wisdom, um, you can find me. It's 72 The Architect, all the same everywhere. You can send me a message. Let me know or add support if you want a tip. I really appreciate those things. On Clapper Community, I love you guys because you know what? There are a lot of you are making content. Let me just take a break. Um, a lot of you are making content and that it's amazing to see so many people's raw content and their personal value. I am so happy to collaborate with many of you and see your works. So if you're not subscribed, send me a message. I will look at your, your content and I might give you a follow in return. You know, it's, it's just, it's a great time to people connect, talk learn from each other. Stop depending on what comes out on CNN and Fox. You know, that's what I'm talking about. So hopefully you all had a great time. We'll see you next time. Take care. Rise and grind with 72 Arctic. I'm out. There we go.
let's see how this ends.